Hi, Peter Old here in sunny North Queensland in Port Douglas to interview one of the legends of the South Bunbury Football Club. Not only a legend of South Bunbury, but also Swan Districts and Essendon. So Liam started his journey with South Bunbury in 1977. He left for a year and came back in 79 and 1980. He played in the 1980 undefeated Premiership team here at South Bunbury and in the grand final won the Pike medal. With his three years at South Bunbury, he had a huge impact. Leon was voted into the South Bunbury Football Club Team of the Century. After his time at South Bunbury, Leon moved to Swan Districts. He played 64 games between 1981 and 1983. He was a member of the 1982 and 1983 Premiership teams and in 1983 was voted as Swan Districts fairest and best. Again, after only three years, the impact Leon had at Swan District was enormous. He was voted into the Swans Team of the Century and in 2008 was inducted into the Waffle Hall of Fame. So in 1984, Leon moved to play for Essendon in the VFL. He had immediate impact, particularly in those first two years, 1984 and 1985, when he was a member of the successful Essendon Premiership teams. Leon played 86 games for Essendon and had such an impact that Kevin Sheedy picked Leon in his team of the century for Essendon. Leon also represented WA three times in the State of Origin series. Leon was also a member of the 1984 VFL Team of the Year and the 1985 All-Australian Football Team. Welcome mates, great to have a chat to you. So uh, to start things on, how did you get involved with the South Bunbury Footy Club? And uh, if you'd like to mention something about the uh, urban myth about the Bunbury story. Yes, yeah, so when I left Victoria, I was um, travelling over with a mate and he wanted to go north and work in the mines, but I wanted to stay south and be involved in footy. Um, when I first left, I picked out a place because um, I had a big scale map. I thought somewhere close to the coast and it was Narragin. Um, so <laughs> it wasn't actually until I got into West Australia and got a bigger scale map that I realised that that's probably not the spot. So I didn't want to be in the city because I'd just been there, so I came to Bunbury. Um, as luck would have it that weekend, Bunbury were playing South Bunbury um, at the Oval. I didn't know where, so I found out where. And as I drove the combi with my dog Casey, I drove up to the ground and straight away, here's, here's the uh, white with the red V, which is yep. my hometown of Avon. Yep. So that. I'm, I'm in. Straight away, there's no ifs and buts, that's where I'm going. So after the game that day, I think you beat them. I went into the, uh, the rooms and spoke to, I'm not sure who it was now, um, and found out where you, when and where you train. So then on the Monday night, because I wasn't working, I went there early and was running around the ground with Casey and board shorts and long hair and a bit of a look going at the time. Um, and then it was always going to be South Bunbury, but yeah. somewhere along the line it's been changed. I'm not sure whether it might have been someone in South Bunbury who actually said it. I'm not sure whether we want this type here. And it's been <laughs> along the way transferred to Bunbury or... Because I was with a fellow one day and he said, I was there. I was there when the president told you to F off from yeah. Bunbury. And it, it, it's not true. So urban myth. Absolute. Urban myth. So always going to be South Bunbury. The minute I saw the colour of the jump, I mean... Yeah. What a decision. Great yes. South Bunbury, great for your footy career. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No regrets there. Yeah, so uh, no regrets. What are some of your fondest memories of South Bunbury? Um, well, I couldn't believe when I, when I first went to the ground, um, I played in good standard of footy in Victoria at Bendigo, and after the match we'd get changed quickly. Um, the guys, well, I suppose the guys who were better endowed took their time because... <laughs> <laughs> not you, not me. <laughs> I was pretty happy to get dressed. Um, and then the women would, and the you know, partners would come in and you'd have a keg in the room in amongst the tape and the liniment. It was very, yeah. very basic. So when I got to South Bunbury and saw the facilities, I was absolutely amazed that, you know, Western Australia was that far advanced in, in that area. Yeah. It was quite extraordinary. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And of course the club rooms, I mean, they were at that stage, they were just amazing. Yeah. Um, the, the weakness was playing on Sunday which was, you know, Victorian, it's Saturday every time, it's not Sunday, but, uh, but you know, the after matches, the dances they had, it was, you know, it was a great social activity, and of course, when you're winning playing footy, it's a lot of fun. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, no, South Primary was a, has been actually quite amazing to me. Um, and the fact that, you know, I've got a wife out of it, I've got an extended family out of it, and that's where it all started from South. And, um, and, and the great Kevin Ur, who actually, I must thank, he kickstarted my career by actually getting, um, what's his name? South Fremantle, Brownie. He, oh, yeah, he got, he got in touch with Brownie, yeah. as Kevin was a mad South man. Yep. He got in touch with Brownie and said, look, get this bloke here, um, which then got Toddy and Swan Districts moving. So, yeah. And I met Brownie one night and he said, it's the only time Toddy's ever lied to me. But that kickstarted the whole package. So, um, from there, you know, the accidental footballer was on his journey. So yeah. Been, yeah, well, awesome. So some of the characters of South Bunbury, can you remember some of the characters or well, yeah, some was, of the fun times? I mean, it was a funny group. I mean, I just, Banger Francis and, and Keith Stafford are two that just hit me straight away. They're just yeah. funny men. I yeah. just enjoyed their company. I mean, there's a lot of them here. Look, Pancho, you know, just all the different blokes. Every footy team's got them. Yeah. Every team's got the characters. Uh, and just, they're good fun yeah. to be around. And as I say, when, you, when you're winning footy, it's a lot of fun to play and it just makes, it's really easy. Yeah. You, know, you want to go to the functions, you want to go to the game, and, you know. Um, funny incidents as well, one time, I do admit, no one will know this, this, this was, and the only time I reckon I really wanted a hold to come in front of me and I could jump into it. Probably yeah. the only time in my life. We played Donnybrook and I think in the grand final, we lost by seven points. Yes, 77. Yeah, okay, so then, um, went to work Monday, normal day, I thought I'll, I'll go over and have a pot at the bustle, uh, uh, not the bustle, the Burley. Burley. So I lived in Elliott Street. Yep. So I went over there and I heard there was a bit of activity here. So I just went in after work, five o'clock. Um, well, I've walked in and every head in the place has turned towards me. It's five o'clock at night and it's the Donnybrook boys having their after match drink, their Mad Monday. Yeah. And they were all well on the way. Um, and I thought, oh no, yeah. no, I don't <laughs> want to be here. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was committed. I had to go in, and um, they, they bought me a beer, bought me a couple of beers, and I said, "Oh, good on you, mate. You're the only bloke that bothered to come and have a beer with us." Yeah. So I got a bit of mileage out of that. <laughs> I thought I don't want to be here. That was the grand final. I think um, John Silcock grabbed you, <laughs> headbanged and threw it over the fence. Yeah, yeah. 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 you did do that. Yeah. 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 Gordon yeah. Clifford punched me in the back of the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you put, everyone got a punch off him that day, I think. Yeah. Uh, one of the characters, Gordon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, just off football for a little while, Leon, you came to town, and as you said, your long, long hair and the, the combi man and Casey, yeah. and uh, uh, you had that image, and then you moved into a place in Kerry Park and declared it a nuclear free zone. So, how did that come about, and what were the repercussions? <laughs> In those days, I was on my uh, reading my grassroots and Earth Garden magazines and uh, making my own shirt. I made my own shirt there at one stage, which was a bit of a one of them a bit longer than the other. But I've got a bone <laughs> on the Mung Bean Trail and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. And I, and I read one of these magazines. Look, you know, this this make your own house nuclear free as a stand against the nuclear energy system. Yeah. I don't know how it actually got to me, how it got to me, or whether I, I wouldn't have rang up the paper, I don't think, but I don't know how it actually happened that it got going there. But anyway, I remember doing an interview sitting on the front of the house and arms folded, and this is, this is, there'll be no nuclear energy on this block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, then I had to go, well, I didn't have to, but I was invited to go down to the Barlinger uh, commune and give a bit of a talk down there. I was a fair bit out of my depth in that one, but uh, no, I was just part of a uh, stage of my life, you know, when you're young, yeah. you've got. Ideals, yeah, and, and, and we're all a bit idealistic, but it's yeah, yeah. But in fact, I look at it and say there's no nuclear energy there, so I, I think I'm going to be one. I might have to do involved in yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm um, taking that. Yeah. So um, moving back to footy, um, Kevin Chin. So it was a bit of a. Can I just tell one more? Yeah, sure. Okay. Just a quick round before we leave South. Yeah. Um, I moved when I got there, very kind. I moved in with um, Maxie Hollins and Gerald Maguire. Yeah. And you know, I had a couple of training runs with them, and I, with this, and I just sat and I said, Right, boys, how do you reckon I'm going to go here? And then uh, 
And Jill said, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Max said, oh, I reckon you'll be a handy second. <laughs> so if he just applies for any um, recruiting work down there, I'll yeah. make, make, make look it up. <laughs> no, it was, no, good place. They're very kind to me back Yeah, looked after you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so moving back into the footy and going to the AFL, obviously Kevin Sheedy, big name in football. Um, he's obviously got a very high opinion of you, naming you and his team of the century. Very successful uh, era. So how was he as a coach and as a person? Oh, look, he's, he's a great coach. He's, as a person, he's, he's way too intense for me. Yeah. It's because it's football or nothing. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's not how I roll. Um, yeah. Football's part of the gig. <laughs> yeah. But it's not the whole gig. Yeah. Um, but look, he's very good, very good at what he was doing. He's, uh, you know, come out of Tom Hafey era, so he's, he certainly trained us too hard. Yeah. We're out there too long. He, he got in uh, experts, like uh, physical education experts come in. And they were poor. They, they just said, Kevin, stop. Yeah. Stop. It's too much. Because, um, you know, Thursday nights, he'd have crowd, we'd have crowds out training. Like Melbourne's just another place for football. The crowd yeah. there, 5,000 at training. Yeah. Um, and he, and the crowd's, oh, an hour and all this. And so he just keep going man to man, doing like it's, it's too much. Even um, more so than too much? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. But look, very astute. The way he changed the game um, with the 15 metre penalties, the way yeah. he, he moved uh, the backs and forwards, or Billy Duckworth down forward in that 85, 84 grand final. Yeah. The way he swung those players back to forward, and you know, he was one of the first to sort of do a bit of that. The fact that Essendon's got the Indigenous round, the Anzac round, yes. you know. That's off to the work he's done, but yeah. I remember the time he, he was recruiting me. I hadn't signed yet, and we're in a meeting with three of us, and you know he's sort of really intense and all this. He's, and he looked at me and said, "Do you love football, Leon?" And I'm just going, "Oh no, <laughs> um, you know, love is your family, your wife. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I've never in the life." I said, "Oh, I really like it a lot, Kevin." <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could come up with. I thought, oh, yeah. why, why didn't I just lie there? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, but he was on the spiel. He was bumping. So. Well, so just on the side of that, I, I don't know if you know this, but I, I met up with Kevin Sheedy years later, and I got to talk to him, and he said, "Where are you from?" I said, "South Brumby." No, oh, Liam Baker. And I said, "Yeah." So, so what do you think of Bakes? You know, and he actually said to me, "I coached Leon Baker in football, but he coached me on life." So I thought that was a great. A testament to you of the impact you probably had on, Ke on Kevin. Okay. So well, that's different. So no, that was something that really stuck home to me. Yeah, yeah. Look, I've heard that one, so that's a bit yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, again, same with the football thing. What was your greatest football achievement uh, and your best football moment? Well, every every grand final when the siren sounds is a fantastic moment wherever you play. It doesn't matter where. Um, there was a lot more intensity over there in that one, so there's, it's a massive feeling of relief, actually. Yeah. Um, because it's, it is very intense. I found it very intense. It's, it's full on. So, um, yeah, I, one of my favourite moments in all time is when I dodged around Donnie Holmes on the wing at Windy Hill. Yeah. <laughs> playing for the Eagles. He was playing for the Eagles, yeah. yeah and, he's, and he's come at me later, we were talking, I was laughing, and he said, I knew you were going to do it, I knew you were going to dodge. And I thought, no, he's not, he's not. He went for the smother and I dodged around. I was, I was pleased because he knew, he knows my game as good as anyone. Yeah. And I pleased I could get around him, so that's yeah. quite love. Yeah. Um, and beating, playing for Western Australia, beating the Victorians. Yeah. 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 That was, you that were a Victorian was, too. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't fussed about that. No. <laughs> I mean, they were, we're playing the Vicks and we beat them, and it was a fantastic day. Yeah. Except for the kick of Vic signs. I thought that was a day <laughs> to kick of Vic signs. That, yeah. wasn't, that wasn't too special, I think. But yeah. Yeah, so um, um, going back to your, your philosophy on football in 1985, you took a trip to Sri Lanka the day after you won an VFL Grand Final. So how did that all come yeah, about? Well, see, as I said, the year before, 84, um, I had people over, John Cooper from Swans and um, you know, my father-in-law, my father, and there was a group of us there. But on the Saturday, it's all about the players. You, you've got functions to go to. You know, for the sponsors, and it's it's not really your time. You yeah, know, you're still selling your time, sort of thing. No, it's a good night. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. but it's still not yours. Yeah. Uh, and then the Sunday, it's back to the football ground, and you know, there's just for the mobs. Yeah. And that's that's all okay. Um, but I just 
and I wanted to be with my group. Yeah. Um, and or the players on the Mad Monday is great because you're with the players. You can actually let your hair down and actually enjoy the moment a bit. Yeah. The rest of the time you are on display, and you know you can't mess up too much because you're not like we do these days. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but I found it very very intense. Yeah. Um, so the next year, it was on the tw- I think it was on the 29th. The grand final was on the 29th of September. Airfares changed on the 1st of October because um, it was high season then. Yeah. So I said, look, I'm happy just to go on the 30th, the day after, cheaper. And I don't really want to go through all the stuff. And I really need to have a break. I don't want to do pre-season like they do. Yeah. So if I sneak away, they can't get me. Yeah. I don't do the pre-season. They come back in January. And I have to, I have to come back good, but yeah. you can't put on weight in Sri Lanka and India. Yeah. So I come, I come back skinny and bearded and <laughs> made look like I was a bit fat on my actually was, but... Um, no, but th- and that was very good for, for me yeah. to get away for three months, forget about footy and see life. Yeah. And realise how lucky I actually was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Put it to be in my position and watching what's going on in India. Yeah. You know, I never complained again about football training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so that was, yeah, that's, that really suited us. And um, after we finished, we went for a year overseas. Yeah. Me, so yeah. Uh, I needed that for the break. It's still yeah. intense. Yeah. And so you were late both into waffle footy at 24 and VFL, VFL football at 28. Mm. So you sort of did it on your terms, in well, your look, time frame. Um, if there was a book about me, it would be The Accidental Footballer. It really would, because the whole thing is sort of an accident. Um, you know, I'm just, like, just starting playing, you say, at 24 by Kevin setting the wheels in motion. Yeah. Uh, I played two years at Swans and then um, I left and went, uh, I was going to give it away. Yeah. I, I, I travelled up to, I was going to Darwin, but I travelled up to and got to Port Hedland and I didn't even look at the map. It had been shut for six weeks, the road. So I turned around to come back and I was out of money. So <laughs> I went back, went back to Swans and <laughs> played another year and got another premiership. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and, and the whole thing with Essendon is actually the recruiting people at Essendon, uh, they had horses on my godfather's in Avenue. They had horses on his property. Yep. So he said to him, look, have a look at this bloke in Western Australia. He's killing them over there because he knew me, like yep. he was watching. Yeah. Um, so then they actually started looking and, and, and the way it goes and like it just, you fall into two AFL premierships. I mean, you could write a script, you could write a script of the movie or yeah. most, and it wouldn't, you wouldn't, Dare to ride as lucky as my story in football has been, really. Um, so, you know, just it all fell in the right place, and yeah. you go straight to premiership sides. Like, Robbie Flower plays all his life and doesn't get into yeah. one, yeah. And, and I fall into two in the first two years. So, it's been a lucky story. Yeah. It really has been a lucky story. Yeah. I think you're selling yourself a little bit short there, Bakes, because you had a fair bit of ability to. Well, that, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. You find out as you go, I suppose, you never realise you can do that. Play at Swans. And yeah. You play at Swans, and you never even think you'd go there. And then you go there, and you realise, well, maybe I can do this. Yeah. And, um, and then you find out, well, you can do it all right. Yeah, yeah. As it turns out, but luck. A lot of luck played a part in this game and this story. But yeah, I'm more, thankful for it. More than luck in this story, Leon. I can give you the tip. <laughs> I'll take, I'll yeah. take the luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what are you doing now? Are you involved in footy? No, oh. I'm trying to be a golfer. It's yeah. my passion now. Um, I, I coached up here, that's what got us up here. I coached for a year and coached the under 16s one year. Um, but they're a bit too loose up here for me. I, you know, even for you. Even for me. <laughs> Football you need to give. You, yeah. need, you really need to give. You need to be there at training. You need to train properly and then get off and have fun with each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a simple philosophy, but if you're going to be out there, why not be out there and do it properly? Yeah. Train hard for a short time, do it well, do it properly, and get something out of it. And then go and have your refreshments, have your fun, whatever. But they've got it the other way around a bit up here. <laughs> Maybe yeah. the refreshments a bit, a bit too much. Uh, so I just did one year. Yeah. Uh, and now, yeah, as I say, I don't have much to do with them. Sad day in me is golf. Yeah. Golf. Yeah. So, so that would be your probably um, feedback to some of the South Bunbury football players that are watching this now. Yeah. Is um, 
I mean, get out there and, and, and train at full scale. Yeah. So when it's full scale in a match, you've practiced it. Yeah. And don't don't half do your training just rolling around. When I mean, someone's chasing you, you try and do it faster than you can. Yeah. I mean, get there with your bloke before training. Get there a bit earlier, ten yards apart, and just kick the ball full bore into each other and mark it with one grab. Yeah. Um, you know, that's how you improve. If you don't mark it, you get a broken nose. You quickly learn yeah. if it's coming at you hard. And that's, you know, in a game, then it'll be there. Yeah. If you don't do that, you know, you, you, you're going to fumble. Yeah. A little fumble and it's gone. Yeah. The game's a lot quicker. It's, it's gone now. Yeah. It's a different game. Different game, right? So we'll just really quickly on that. How do you find today's game? Oh, I don't find it as enjoyable to watch. Yeah. I must say. It's, it's getting to more like degrees of basketball because it's back and forward like basketball is um, it's look it's, it's hard and they're very fit yeah very athletic and very skillful with their in close hands yeah so it, it is good it is good but I just don't find it as good to watch yeah yeah so um, yeah it, it doesn't appeal to me as much now yeah but I, I appreciate their talents and their skills yeah they, they really have come on so uh, well, thank you, Leon, for your time. Um, as I said, you're a South Bunbury legend. Um, the South Bunbury team of the century, Swan District's team of the century, Kevin Sheedy's team of the century. Although uh, you reckon it's luck, it's a lot more than luck, mate, I'll give you the tip. And so as we finish off, is there anything you'd like to just, um, this is your opportunity, South Bunbury supporters, members, and uh, sponsors are all out there having a look at this, so is there anything you'd like to say as a final? Well, I would like to say thanks to the club. Like, that's where it all started, really, for me. Um, I mean, it, it was way ahead of the others at the time when I got there. Hopefully, they still are. Uh, their facilities are first class, and, and their people really do love and support the club. So I really hope all that's still there. And their record is second to none, I believe, around Australia. Yep. Um, still, I imagine. So... Uh, good luck to them in their future endeavours and hopefully that this year with great effort and you know there's another one there maybe yeah. but you enjoy the enjoy the journey yeah that's what it is it's a footy club it's there to do your stuff but enjoy your enjoy the time with right. each other excellent well, well, that's awesome thank you so much for your time no um, i know uh, this is um something you're maybe not comfortable with all the time because you're always very unassuming, but um, it was an absolute pleasure. My pleasure. And my you. final thing is, are you embarrassed about what those man crush on you? Well, I forgot him. He's another one I need to thank. He, <laughs> he made me look so good that way. If he was here, I'd tell him. Yeah. <laughs> he, he did. Yeah. Hit me on the nose that many times yeah. with his kicks. Uh, yeah, no, awesome. Good lad. Thanks, thanks, folks. Appreciate your time. No problem. Cheers, mate. Cheers.